Today, I want to prove that the derivative of e to the x is equal to e to the x. But before I begin proving that, let's talk about what does that actually mean. That means if I have the graph of e to the x, right, and I find a height, if I find the point that has the height of 4, the slope of the graph at that point is going to be equal to 4. So this means that the height of the graph is equal to the slope at that point. So let's get into proving this. So something we need to keep in the back of our mind is that E, Euler's number, is equal to the limit as n approaches 0 of 1 plus n to the power of 1 over n. Right? So let's begin our proof now. So if we have the derivative of e to the x, can we write this in terms of a limit? Yes, we can. So we can write this as the limit is delta x approaches 0 of e to the x plus delta x minus e to the x over delta x. And why can we write it like this? Well, because up here, what we're doing is we're finding the difference of this rate of change. We're finding this change and we're finding the difference that the change makes. Then we're dividing by that change to find the average rate of change. And that's what a derivative is. So then we can say that this is equal to the limit of delta x approaches 0 of e, and then we can just use some exponent properties, e to the x times e to the delta x minus e to the x over delta x. And now what can we do? We can actually factor out an e to the x here. And we can take it completely out of the limit. So we can write e to the x times the limit is delta x approaches 0 of, well, we've factored out an e to the x, so this cancels out, right? And then this cancels out to 1, so this becomes del e to the delta x minus 1 over delta x. And the denominator re remains unchanged because if you have, let's say you have a fraction like 3 over 4, you can take out a 3 and rewrite it like 3 times 1 over 4, right? And the denominator remains unchanged. We're essentially doing the same thing here. So then we have this. So what should we do now? What we actually want to do is we want to define a new variable. And what do we want to define? We want to define for n, right? Because we're trying to work towards something that looks like this. So let's say n equals e to the delta x minus 1. And just as a reminder, you can complete, you can define all the variables you want in algebra. As long as the equality stays true, you can change up the variables all you want. So we're going to make n equal e to the, full, to the delta x minus 1, right? And then let's solve for delta x. We get e to the delta x, right? e to the delta x equals n plus 1. Then we get, let's take the natural log of each side, we get delta x equals the natural log of n plus 1. All right, let's cross out this transition step. And we're left with these two. These are going to be quite helpful to us. So what do we want to do now? We actually want to write our limit with n now instead of delta x. So what we need to actually do before we can do that is we need to think about, well, as delta x approaches 0, what is n approach? And there are pretty rigorous ways to do this, especially with the epsilon delta definition of the limit. I'm not going to get into that, at least right now. But we can look at it up here. We can substitute 0 in for delta x. We, up here, because these two expressions are equivalent to each other, so let's do it for this one because this one's easier. When delta x equals 0, e to the 0, right, equals what? 1, right, because anything to the 0th power is 1, minus 1 is 0. So at least for the, so we know that as delta x approaches 0, n approaches 0, and let's see what happens when n approaches 0. It's easier in this one here. 
when n approaches 0, we get the natural logarithm of 0 plus 1 equals delta x. Well, the natural logarithm of 0 plus 1 is the same thing as the natural logarithm of 1, which is 0. So as n approaches 0, delta x approaches 0. So now that we know that they approach the same thing, we can say that this is equal to e to the x times the limit as n approaches 0 of, well, we already defined this right here as n, right? So we can just turn this into n, and what can we do? We already defined delta x as the natural logarithm of n plus 1. All right, so now what can we do? What we want to do, actually, is we want to multiply both the um, numerator and the denominator of this fraction by 1 over n. And you'll see why very shortly, very soon. So we can say if we multiply this by 1, so multiply by 1 over n, right? And I'm going to write 1 over n on this side of the natural logarithm because it'll make it more clear times 1 over n, right? We can say that this is equal to e to the x of the limit as n approaches 0, blah, 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 of, well, n times 1 over n, right? We're multiplying it by its reciprocal, so that's going to be 1, right? Then down here, with logarithm properties, let's remember, for example, x times the logarithm of y is equal to logarithm of y to the power of x. So we can do the same thing here. So we can say this is equal to the natural log of n plus 1 to the power of 1 over n. Okay? So that's what we have there. Now, what we actually want to do is we want to put this limit inside the natural logarithm. But how can we do that? Well, something we know is as long as the limit exists, and it's continuous at that point, we know that the limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to f of the limit as x approaches a of x. Okay? So we know that. We can think about our natural log as a function, and we can think about this whole thing as a composite function, all right? But what I want to do is let's go back to when we hadn't multiplied it by 1 over n, because it'll actually it'll make it simpler. So what we want to do is let's turn this into a composite function. Let's say f of x equals, actually, sorry, I'm, I was mistaken when I said we want to go back to this. We want to stay with this. We're going to make this the composite function as f of x equals 1 over the natural logarithm of x, okay? Now, we, what we want to do is we want to make g of x equal to what's inside the logarithm, which is n plus 1 to the power of 1 over n, all right? So now we have this. We can think about this right here, right, ignoring the limit for now, as the, so we can know, think about this as f of g of, in this case, n, okay? So we, now that we have this, what we want to do is make sure that these functions are, in fact, continuous and they are they ex the limit exists. So how can we do that? Well, what we want to do is let's realize that this is f of g of x. So and we're doing it as x in this case, right? And this we can think about as n, but as in this case it's x approaches zero. So let's look at f of x and let's substitute zero in for that. Well, what do we get? Oh, sorry, no, no. We don't want to do f of, we're doing f of g of x, so we want to substitute 0 in for this. Well, it's the same, that's actually the same thing as <coughs> this. 
which is equal to E, right? So this is equal to E. Then what we want to do is we want to come back up and re um, plug E into 1 over the natural log of X. So we can say this is 1 over the natural log, the natural log of E, right? which is equal to, this cancels out to 1, 1 over 1. We have a, we have a number, so it, it does in fact, it's a continuous and it exists, right? That's what we've confirmed. So we can get rid of this. So now that we've actually confirmed that, what can we do about that? Well, we can take this and we can put the limit inside. So we can say this is e of x of what, the 1 over the natural log of the limit as yeah as x I don't know sorry n plus one to the power of one over n <coughs> then we can set let's realize now what do we have down here? <coughs> we have this is equal. To, sorry, I forgot to include it as n approaches zero. This is equal to that, right? So now we can say that this is e to the x times <coughs> one over the natural logarithm of e, which cancels out to one. So this is e to the x. <coughs> Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. <coughs> Let me know if I said anything wrong. Um, have a great day.